In the peak of his fame, Ludwig van Beethoven was recognized by kings and emperors as the greatest among the greatest. It's owed to him more than the creation of a new musical style. His work is like the introduction of human existence in the kingdom of sounds. He modified the century in which he lived, and after him, nothing was ever the same. Ludwig van Beethoven was born on 16th of December 1770 in Bonn. His parents, Johann van Beethoven and Maria Magdalena Kevrick had married on 12th of December 1767, in the church of St. Remigio. Johann was 27 and Maria 21 at the time. The Beethoven family, partly Flemish by ancestry, a mixture of middle-class and Rhineland peasantry, had two generations of musicians preceding the birth of the genius who would immortalize their name. In the genealogy of the Beethoven family, there may even be Spanish ancestors. The Low Countries had been occupied by Spain, specifically the Catholic areas where the family came from. The child was called Ludwig, after his grandfather, a choirmaster. The christening took place on 17th of December 1770, the day after his birth, a common practice at that time. His godfather was his aforementioned grandfather and his godmother Frau Brahms, the wife of a neighbor who had organized the christening. Even at the time there were rumors that the child was illegitimate. Later on, these rumors gained some credence and between 1810 and 1816, it was being openly suggested that he was illegitimate son of Frederick II, much to the anger of Beethoven and his friends. Ludwig's father was the son of Louis van Beethoven. Known as the old man, this musician of Dutch origin was well respected and reasonably well off. He had been appointed Kapelmeister at the court of the Elector of Cologne and received a salary of 400 florins, which was not an inconsiderable sum at that time. To certain extent, Johann is the link between grandfather and grandson, between two musicians of prestige, separated in time by a generation. Johann himself began his studies as a chorister in the church of the Elector at the age of 12. At 16 he was appointed Hofmusikant, an appointment, which had no doubt much to do with the teaching and preparation he received from his father Louis. Johann fell in love with a young girl called Maria Magdalena. Her father, who had died, had been head chief at the castle of Aaron Breitstein. When Johann decided to get married to her, his father Louis, the old man, was vehemently opposed to the idea at the beginning. Although the nobility at that time made no distinction between members of the lower orders and musicians were also viewed as servants, Louis thought otherwise. He felt there was a class difference and that he belonged to a different social order, a feeling, incidentally, that his grandson would inherit. Finally, however, he gave his consent to the marriage. Louis died suddenly on 24th of December 1773, when Ludwig was only three years old. From then on things did not get too well for the Beethoven family. Johann sought his father's position at court, but the elector refused his request. Ludwig's mother died on 17th of July 1787. She was only 41. She died of tuberculosis due to poor nutrition. As the family at this time were beset by economic problems. Johann, her husband, having been rejected by the elector after the death of his father Louis, had taken to drinking, spending what little money he earned in local taverns. His family, deserted and destitute, were left to fend for themselves. Little wonder that Ludwig and his brothers and sister had less than a happy childhood. There is certain confusion about Ludwig van Beethoven's birth certificate. In April 1769, a year before his own birth, a brother had been born, who had also been named and registered Ludwig. This child only lived for six days. Ludwig was born the following year and given the same name. This has given rise to a great deal of confusion, which has never been clarified. Dates used by biographers are sometimes contradictory due to this problem with the archives. Anton Karl was born in April 1774. His godparent were the minister Belderbuch, and Countess Caroline von Satzenhofen. 
Johann thought that with these godparents he might have some influence on the elector and be appointed to his father's position at court. This, as we know, did not happen. Before Ludwig's sixth birthday, in October 1776, his second brother, Nicolaus Johann, was born. Beethoven's only sister, Maria Margarita, was born in 1786. She was only one year old when her mother died. Beethoven began his studies with his father, and at the age of eight, performed his first concerto accompanying a young singer. This was at five o'clock on the evening, of 26th of March 1778, in the academy where he studied. This was where his father decided that he should take lessons from several teachers in the different musical disciplines. He began to attend music lessons with a teacher called Van Dan Eden, court organist and a friend of his grandfather Luis. These classes did not last long, as the child felt they were a waste of time, and that he himself knew more about music than the old man. His father sought another teacher, and in 1779 he was being taught by Tobias Pfeiffer, an excellent musician, although a little odd. The latter quickly became friendly with the pupil's father as both of them used to frequent the same taverns. At the same time Ludwig began attending classes with a little-known musician called Christian G. Neef. Both teachers treated their pupil roughly, at times getting him out of bed and forcing him to spend the whole night playing the piano. Surprisingly, Beethoven was never bitter about this. However, such behavior meant that Pfeiffer only lasted a year in Bonn, and so Ludwig was soon free from his influence. In 1780, Ludwig was being taught violin and viola by his cousin, Franz Robontini. At the same time, he was attending primary schools. First New Gas, later Munsterschule, and finally Tyrosinium. Beethoven was both overworked and undernourished for a child of his age. Beethoven was born and brought up in Bonn. It was there that the first signs of his genius came to light, and where he had his first experience of life. It was not in Bonn, his native city, but in Vienna, at the time the musical capital of the world, that Beethoven's enormous musical talent began to develop. In Vienna, Beethoven had his best friends and his great masters, and it was Vienna that shaped his personality and his style. In 1781, Beethoven was invited to Holland. His father could not go, but it was an opportunity not to be missed, and he let him go with his mother. Like Mozart, Beethoven would tour as a child prodigy. They arrived in Rotterdam in autumn 1781. Traveling down the Rhine, it was so cold that his mother had to frequently rub his feet to avoid frostbite. Beethoven gave only a few performances in private houses. He obviously was not yet the child prodigy his parents wished him to be. In 1787, Beethoven traveled to Vienna. This was the turning point in his career. He spent several weeks organizing his future life, during which time, it is supposed he met Mozart, who would later be his teacher. Mozart asked Ludwig to play something for him, but thinking that the piece had been rehearsed beforehand, Mozart was not particularly impressed. When Beethoven realized this, he asked Mozart to suggest a theme on which he might improvise. This time, the young pianist of 16, did indeed impress the genius from Salzburg. Mozart went to an adjoining room where some friends were listening, take note, he said, one day the whole world will be talking about him. Some biographers suggest that Mozart taught Beethoven composition, others disagree. There is as yet no conclusive proof for either theory. Beethoven had to leave Vienna shortly after his arrival there. His mother had died, and he had to return to Bonn. But he was back to Vienna again in 1792, receiving instruction from Haydn. From this point on, the city really became his home. Haydn's fees for these lessons were symbolic. As he was anxious to help Beethoven, 
Haydn got him lodgings in the attic of the home of Prince Lichnowsky, hoping that a good relationship might develop, which is in fact what happened. Within a short time Beethoven was a guest of honor in the prince's house, with rooms, servants, and a carriage at his disposal. In the early years in Vienna, Beethoven was known more as a performer than a composer, and he used to take part in competitions with other pianists. In 1796, he went on tour to Prague and Berlin, performing the first three parts of his Mass and the first six parts of Psalm 191. To a certain extent, it can be said that Beethoven was nearly always in love. There were many women in his life, one of the most important being Eleanor von Brunning. She was the daughter of the family that did so much for Ludwig after his mother had died. In the opera Fidelio, it is no mere accident that the name of the main female character, Leonora, is so similar to that of his beloved young friend, Eleanor. And among the letters written by the German genius, there is one dated 2nd of November 1793, which opens with the charming statement, Adorable Eleonora. For Beethoven, these were fleeting affairs that served as a distraction from domestic difficulties and court duties. These two ladies were flirtations, which he would always remember with affection. Magdalena Willman. Beethoven's feelings for this charming singer quickly turned to love. But when he told her he loved her, was brutally rejected, for two reasons, he is ugly and he is half mad. Another of the tortured loves of the musical genius, she was a 16-year-old countess, and one of his pupils. The Immortal Moonlight Sonata is dedicated to her. Josephine von Dayen, a countess and widowed from 1803, Beethoven became good friends with her. Therese Malfatti and Amalia Siebold, although there is hardly any documentary evidence about these two women, several biographers have linked them with Beethoven, between 1801 and 1812. All his teachers from this period agree, that Beethoven had a difficult personality, and that his musical training was deficient in certain areas. Owing to being self-taught in Bonn, Beethoven really had to apply himself to the study of counterpoint. Ludwig himself admitted that, when he studied under Haydn he had never paid a great deal of attention, and for this reason he refused to be called Haydn's pupil, as he felt he did not deserve it. But in fact he owes much to Haydn, especially when it comes to style. In 1787, Beethoven traveled to Vienna for the first time, hoping to be accepted by Mozart as one of his pupils. He met the genius from Salzburg and was indeed accepted. Some biographers maintain that Beethoven never actually received instruction from Mozart. This assertion is supposed by the fact that, Beethoven had to go back to Germany suddenly due to the unexpected death of his mother, and that he did not return to Vienna for some time. On the other hand, other biographers claim, perhaps more convincingly, that Beethoven was indeed a pupil of Mozart's but only for a period of four months, and the subject studied was composition. In 1792 Beethoven began his studies with Haydn. These lasted three years, that is up to 1794, when Haydn moved to London. Beethoven venerated Haydn, and was the only man whom Beethoven was to bend his knee before, in order to kiss his hand.
After Haydn, Beethoven continued his studies until 1795, with Johann Georg Albrecht Sperker, an organist at the Imperial Court in Vienna. He was an outstanding teacher who made an important contribution to Beethoven's musical education. Antonio Salieri, Mozart's old rival was also one of Beethoven's teachers. He taught him vocal composition during the period he was studying under Albrecht Sperker. Aloy Forster, Beethoven continued his studies with this composer who was a specialist in writing scores for quartets. Among his friends, special mention must be given to Prince Lichnowsky, who had welcomed him as a guest of honor in his house. Apart from a horse and servants, Beethoven also had a string formation, composed of professional musicians at his disposal. Prince Lobkowitz, who was the same age, as Beethoven became his most intimate friend. Count Moritz, a brother of Prince Lichnowsky and Baron von Glaschenstein were also friends and patrons. In musical circles, Beethoven was friendly with the violinists, Schuppansick, and Crumfalls, the pianists, Karl Czerny, Hummel, Herrig, and Eppingers, and the singer, Kiesuiter. To his group we must add the musicians he met during his Bonn period, Wegeler, Reisha, Stefan and Lawrence von Brunning. He was also friendly with theologian, Amenda. This evidence tends to suggest that, despite his brusque personality, Beethoven had a wide circle of friends. Around 1801, Beethoven began to lose his hearing. He suffered a severe form of tinnitus, a roar in his ears that made it hard for him to appreciate music, and he would avoid conversation. The cause of Beethoven's deafness is unknown, but it has variously been attributed to syphilis, lead poisoning, typhus, or possibly even his habit of immersing his head in cold water to stay awake. Over time, his hearing loss became acute. There is a well-attested story that, at the premiere of his Ninth Symphony, he had to be turned round to see the tumultuous applause of the audience, hearing nothing. In 1802, he became depressed, and considered committing suicide. He left Vienna for a time to a small Austrian town of Heiligenstadt, where he wrote the Heiligenstadt Testament, in which he resolved to continue living through his art. He continued composing even as his hearing deteriorated. After a failed attempt in 1811, to perform his own Emperor Concerto, he never performed in public again. As a result of Beethoven's hearing loss, a unique historical record has been preserved, he kept conversation books discussing music and other issues, and giving an insight into his thought. Even today, the conversation books form the basis for investigation into how he felt his music should be performed, and his relationship to art, which he took very seriously. There are a variety of theories as to why Beethoven suffered from hearing loss, from illness to lead poisoning. The oldest explanation, from the autopsy of the time, is that he had a distended inner ear which developed lesions over time. This theory is outlined in Beethoven, at Les Malentendus, by Maurice Perrot, at Jacques Meyermont. Russell Martin argued, from analysis done, by Walsh and Macron, on a sample of Beethoven's hair, that there were alarmingly high levels of lead in Beethoven's system, and that high concentrations of lead can lead to bizarre and erratic behavior, including rages. Another symptom of lead poisoning is deafness. In Beethoven's era, it was used widely without true understanding of the damage it could lead to, in sweetening wine, finishes on porcelain, and even medicine. It can be said of Ludwig van Beethoven, especially from the time of his arrival in Vienna, that he was a young man, a strong personality, and at times quite difficult to get on with. Both his teachers, and his patrons attest to this. He was also a person of noble ideas. He was very well respected in the circles in which he moved, though his treatment of moralists and critics, could never termed as, being of a polite nature.
In Prince Lichnowsky's house, in Vienna where he lived, he was said to be stubborn. He would deliberately arrive late at meal times, and he paid little attention to the way he dressed. But Beethoven was right, time for a creative artist is not marked out by the hands of a clock. Today any one of Beethoven's works, is worth more than all the clocks in the world. The young genius had always had a brusque, arrogant personality. In 1800, his hearing had began to deteriorate, and with the onset of deafness to contend with, he began to shy away from social events, for fear it might be noticed. By 1801, he had given up all hope of being cured. The distress and frustration this caused him, can hardly be imagined, but he accepted this situation with stoicism. Beethoven was much taken by the ideals of the Enlightenment. He initially dedicated his third symphony, the Eroica, to Napoleon, in the belief that the general would sustain the democratic and republican ideals of the French Revolution, but later crossed out the dedication, as Napoleon's imperial ambitions became clear, replacing it with to the memory of a great man. The fourth movement of his ninth symphony, is a setting of Schiller's Ode and Die Freude, to joy, an optimistic and championing the brotherhood of humanity. Beethoven's intense faith in God, as experienced through art, is an important theme in his conversation books. His belief that art is a force unto itself, and that God is closer to me than others in my art, infuse his search for redemption, through and in music. If Beethoven had many troubles to face, there was one greater than all the others, which made his life a misery. He had never really got on well with his brothers, especially Johann, an apothecary who had become rich by supplying medicine to the army. In 1812, after his meeting with Gouda, Ludwig went to Linz to visit Johann. Beethoven discovered that Johann's private life wasn't as respectable as he would have liked it to have been. Johann was living with one of his employees, Therese Obermeyer. An angry Beethoven threatened that he would report them to the authorities if they didn't get married. The couple took these threats seriously and did indeed get married. Beethoven got on slightly better with his other brother, Karl. When the latter died in 1815, Ludwig became his son's guardian. This boy was also called Karl. Beethoven didn't take his brother's dying wish lightly. He felt this to be the most important responsibility in his life. He got involved in a costly legal battle to gain custody of the child from his mother, Joanna Rice. In 1820 he won the court case, but Carl's mother never ceased in her efforts to regain custody of her son. Beethoven had a grand plan for the child's education, but the boy never lived up to the expectations of his uncle and guardian. Karl had a difficult personality, and after taking him away from his mother, all Beethoven's plans for him came to nothing. On the night of 29th of July 1826, Karl, who was 22 at the time, tried to shoot himself. This attempted suicide was a result of despair, brought on by gambling debts. On 2nd of January 1827, fully recovered from his wounds, Karl joined the Austrian army. Beethoven would never see him again. This succession of tragic events, embittered Beethoven, and perhaps hastened his own death a few months later.
a genius at the piano. Once, when Beethoven was at the Church of the Elector, he had to provide piano accompaniment to certain sections of the Lamentations of Jeremiah in a given key. This was during Holy Week of 1785. He sought permission to change key and the singer agreed. The youngster then gave the new keynote with one finger, and with the other hand, played a series of complicated improvisations. The singer lost the keynote in the cadence. The other musicians were astonished by Beethoven's brilliance, but the singer got extremely angry, and complained to the elector. As a result, the young Ludwig was given a serious telling off for being cheeky. Competitions When Beethoven first moved to Vienna, he began to take part in competitions with other pianists. They used to say of him, he is not a man but a demon. He plays in such a way that he will drive us all to the grave. The recognition of a master. In 1808, in what would be a historic moment in the history of music, Haydn and Beethoven met for the last time. Haydn had been invited by the university to attend a full-scale production of his oratorio, The Creation. During the interval, Haydn, overcome by emotion at the ovation given to his work was taken outside in his wheelchair. All the nobility and upper echelons of society, among them Beethoven, were there to congratulate him. Going down on one knee, kissed him on the hand and forehead. The great Beethoven felt himself humble in the presence of the master. This was the same Beethoven, who years before had called himself careless, and had refused to consider himself Haydn's pupil. At the end of the summer in 1826, Beethoven, worn out and embittered after what happened to his nephew and adopted son, Carl, decided to spend some time in the country. He was to be a paying guest, in a house which his brother Johann had in Niesendorf. He went there accompanied by his nephew. A few days later Carl finally joined the army. His relationship with his brother Johann, hadn't improved, and after a heated argument, he left the house. This was on 1st of December 1826. He hastily set out for Vienna in a rickety, uncovered cart, which belonged to a local milkman. The bad weather, which he encountered on this trip, would have fatal consequences for Beethoven. By the time he got home, he was seriously ill. Pneumonia was diagnosed which was further complicated by hydropsy. And surgery was carried out. Conscious that the end was near, Beethoven made out his will, leaving his nephew Karl as sole beneficiary. His financial position at that time was quite delicate, being just about able to survive thanks to a donation of a thousand florins, from the London Philharmonic Society.
By 24th of March 1827, the situation was hopeless. And two days later, in the presence of his secretary, Anton Schindler, and the burning family, Beethoven died. On the day of his death, at about five in the evening, a violent storm broke out over the city, flashes of lightning illuminating the bedroom. Beethoven had his last breath. Outside it began to snow. The funeral took place two days later, in the Vering Cemetery, in Vienna. More than 20,000 people turned out to pay their respects. The funeral oration was from a poem by Franz Grillparzer, the final part of which, was in many ways prophetic, he who comes after him will not follow in his footsteps, he must begin anew, for this innovator has finished his life's work, at the limits of art. Thank you for listening, if you like this biography, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to visit our website at beethoven.ws for more about Beethoven.